Well, good morning, Christ Walk Church. It is so great to be with you all this morning. Thanks to those of you that are joining with us online as well. Today is one of my very favorite Sundays of the year. We've done this, I think this is um, the third year in a row, and I always look forward to this Sunday, My Story Sunday. You know, around here we talk about the importance of being generous and that we're, we're generous people in the areas of our time, our talent, our treasure, and our testimony. And that last area is what today is all about, being generous to those around us with the story that God is writing in our lives. And so um, there's going to be some people that you might be familiar with that are going to be on screen here today sharing their story with you. And when we share our story, when we talk about the things that God is doing in and through our hearts, in and through our lives, it inspires those around us to make the decision to live for something more. And so that's what today is all about. So I hope that you will approach this with an open heart, with an open mind, with open ears, eyes, open lives to everything that God has in store for you today because I know he's gonna challenge you, he's gonna encourage you, he's gonna do something new in you as a result of these stories that are gonna be shared this morning. So without further ado, let's take it away. Hello, my name is Sarah Snap, and I'm the Connections Director here at Christ Walk Church. About five years ago, I felt the Lord nudging me to do more for him and the church. Being a pastor's wife, I've always helped out by supporting my husband, volunteering in many different capacities and taking care of our family for the past 17 years. However, the past 10 years, I've been working outside the home as a school teacher. And just to give you a little bit of background about me, I have a human resource management degree. However, I've never worked a day in that field. Sometimes I say that I've missed my calling because I went to college for something that I never did. And then to have a career change and start teaching. So back a little bit, like I said, about five years ago, I felt God nudging me to do more. And um, he started revealing that I could use my degree plus my teaching experience to help inside the church. We weren't at a place at the time in our lives that number one, that calling that he was placing on me was actually existed. And two, we were at a place that I wasn't actually able to operate in the giftings and the knowledge and the skills that God had given me. I kept wrestling with um, the things God was placing on my heart. Was it really from him or was it just my desires and what I wanted to do? We left the place that we were at and I continued teaching. And all of a sudden, four years went by and during that time that I was teaching, I was finding it more difficult to devote 100% of my time to the church. I felt guilty that I couldn't do that. I would come home from work exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Now that we are where we are, we could see the possibility of God's calling in my life to actually happen. But the timing was not right. I kept running into roadblocks at my job, not even realizing that it was God orchestrating all of the things that needed to line up in order for me to operate in what he was calling me to do. What he was calling me to do was totally out of my comfort zone. Um, teaching was comfortable. It was what I knew. It was what I did every day. I was good at it. I was successful at it. And it was just comfortable, totally inside of my comfort zone. However, what he was calling me to do would be more of a ministry staff position. I've never had a ministry staff position. Like I said, I've just always volunteered in any capacity that was needed. A ministry staff position was scary. It is scary completely out of my comfort zone. I started to realize that I couldn't do this on my own, that it really was God, because if I could do it on my own, then I wouldn't need God. And he wouldn't call me to do something 
on my strength. He would call me to do something through his strength and through his wisdom and through his knowledge. So I took that step of faith and four months in, I know that God has called me to do this. I can use my education and my experiences to help others connect with the church, to connect with other people, all while discovering their purpose that God has given them. I know that what I'm doing is adding value to the church and to the other people who attend Christ Walk Church. I'm at peace now knowing that my time is not divided between church and teaching. I'm humbled that God is using me in spite of my weaknesses and my fears and my anxieties. And I'm hopeful that God will continue to grow me because I am nowhere near where I need to be. All of this to say that life is a journey. Your past experiences, good and bad, is all part of the plan and purpose God has placed on your life. I didn't miss my calling. All of those different seasons were just another step in my journey. It was all part of my calling. My name is Sarah, and I am living for something more. Hi, I'm Dawn Holland. I am the ministry assistant here at Christ Walk. Now, I've been going to church for pretty much as long as I can remember. Growing up, church was a really big part of my life. I accepted Jesus into my heart at a really young age was baptized when I was seven. When I was in fifth grade, my family moved from Pennsylvania to Arkansas for my dad to pursue his call into the ministry and attend John Brown University, a Christian university that was in Arkansas. When we moved there, he also immediately became the pastor of a church there. So church became an even bigger part of my life. I was always really shy and timid as a kid my favorite verse when I was growing up was Psalms 4-8. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O oh Lord. Make me dwell in safety. I remember so many nights falling asleep, just saying that verse over and over to myself in my head until I would finally fall asleep in peace. I was always afraid. I don't really ever know why. In Pennsylvania, we lived in a really small rural town with less than 400 people. There wasn't much to be afraid of. When we moved to Salem Springs, it was a town of about 10,000 people, and I thought I lived in a huge city. It makes me laugh a lot now that I've lived in Jacksonville and all over other places. The move was really hard for me because my shyness turned into some major social anxiety. I had a really hard time making friends at school, and we didn't really have a lot of kids at the church when we first moved there. I did make friends with one girl whose dad attended the university with my dad. So that worked out and it was great. And we spent a lot of time together, but a year later, her dad graduated and they moved back to Alaska. So I was left alone again. Fortunately, I had met one girl through her and the two of us became inseparable. We were best friends all through junior high. We did everything together and then she moved. <laughs> By the time I went to high school, and started becoming a little more mature. Making friends wasn't quite as hard for me, but I started to get really depressed. I fought with depression a lot and was just anxious and depressed all the time. Church was still a really big part of my life. It was always my choice to go to church and I always wanted to be there. I believed in God with all of my heart, but looking back, I guess I would say that I just didn't really have that close personal relationship with God that I needed to have. I always relied on people and the circumstances to be able to make me happy or unhappy, which was the case most of the time. I remember so many times trying to understand how I could just be joyful and really be able to get the joy that God could provide. But every time I would just fall sh just short of that and I would just end up back in a state of depression. March 23rd of 1996. I can still remember that day very well. It was the day that I had my first taste of alcohol. That started a snowball effect of pretty bad decisions in my life. It lasted until December 31st of 2011. That date is also really significant because it's the last day that I ever took a drink of alcohol. For 15 years, I tried to fill the hole in my heart and find joy and significance from people, 
from alcohol, from chemicals, just from anything I could get pleasure out of. I always held on to my belief in God. I even graduated from that same Christian university that my dad had attended. The majority of the time, I even still went to church. Although I will admit a lot of times I probably was not sober. By the time I was 22, I had been married and divorced. And it was kind of at that point where I started to believe all those lies that Satan was feeding me, that I had gone too far, that God's grace couldn't save me anymore. And I had just fallen too far away. So there was no hope left for me. So at that point, I guess I figured that I might as well just get as much joy out of life as I could here. And I would do anything that would make me feel better. The drugs and the alcohol made me feel like I was invincible. I could do whatever I wanted to. I wasn't afraid. It got rid of my anxiety. Anytime I was high or drunk, I could go stand in front of people or do whatever I wanted and not be nervous and not care about it. I had a good job. I had tons of friends. I even got married again and I had a baby. I thought that my life was great until it wasn't. On January 1st of 2012, I had to call my dad to come and get me out of jail. I had barely made it out of the parking lot the night before when I hit a curb and got pulled over. I still thank God that that cop pulled me over when he did and that I didn't make it out on the highway or anywhere else where I could have hurt myself or hurt other people. I remember sitting in that jail cell and I realized just how bad things had gotten and how far I had fallen. But I also heard God telling me that it wasn't too far. He was still offering to redeem me and save me, but I had a decision that I had to make. The next six months were probably the hardest of my life. I had to face all of the demons in my life and had to reap the consequences of all of the poor choices that I had made over the course of the past several years. I let go of control and I just relied on God. I knew that he could give me the strength I needed to be able to make the hard choices that I needed to make. I know that pruning is necessary for a plant to thrive, but man, does it hurt. There were times that I thought there would not be anything left of me. I was dealing with all of the guilt and the shame of all of the things that I had done, but at the same time, the life that I had thought was so great was falling apart all around me. My so-called friends were all gone. My husband was completely against all the changes that I was making. And he wanted nothing to do with it and wanted nothing to do with changing his life whatsoever. And through a lot of prayer and godly counsel, I realized that it was not safe for me and Zoe to stay with him and we needed to get him out of our life. I remember during one of my counseling sessions, I looked up and I saw a sign on the wall that said, be still and know that I am God. That night I stood outside in the rain and I cried out to God. I knew that he was God and I knew that I needed to trust him, but I felt like I was doing all of the right things. I was making the choices I knew he wanted to me to make. But here I was, my life was completely falling apart again. And at that point, that's when he pretty much yelled through that storm. And he told me that even though I felt like it was falling apart, he was just helping to put all of the pieces into place. That night, he gave me a verse and it helped me to see that everything was going to be okay. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. I leaned on that verse. Every time something happened in a way that it didn't seem good to me, but as years went by, I also saw how that verse continually was being fulfilled in my life. 
when the judge gave me full custody of Zoe, when God brought Doug back into my life, when we were blessed with our beautiful daughter, Stella, and God opened the door for us to be able to move to Florida. He gave Doug a great job where I could be able to stay at home with my girls and take care of them. And then Doug was able to adopt Zoe and our family started to feel a lot more complete. God gave me a period of time, several years, where the only choice I had was to rely on him. And he showed me that no matter what happened in the circumstances of my life, that he was always there and he had always been there. He never changed. It was only me. I would spend hours of the day while the girls were at school just reading my Bible, praying and reading devotional books and watching sermons and just doing everything I could to get closer to God. I finally had that personal relationship that I had always been missing out on as a kid. I started to serve at the church where we were attending and I joined a small group. It made my heart so happy to be able to see my girls at church, enjoying church the way that I had when I was a kid. We moved from Jacksonville up to Yulee, where we are now, and during that time, decided to find a new church. Shortly after we started to attend Christ Walk, Pastor Blake preached a sermon that revolved around John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That sermon sparked something inside of me. I had given so many years to the thief. And now I was at a point where I wanted to have that life and live it to the full. I wanted to know what that meant and I wanted to be able to do that. I started to dive in to what God's purpose was for my life and how I could really be able to live life to the full. My days sitting in the car line picking up the girls became the time that God and I would sit and talk and I would read and I would listen to what God had to tell me and what it was that he was trying to give me that life, that full life and how I could get that life he wanted. During that time, I kept hearing God tell me the word more over and over. I would read something and more would come up. Then came Corona <laughs> and the lockdown. When Pastor Blake introduced the idea of having house churches, I immediately knew that it was something I wanted to do. I wasn't sure what Doug would think about it, but as I approached him, I was shocked to find that he too was 100% on board and thought that was something that we should do. So we opened our home and Satan tried to tell me no one's going to come. Why would anyone show up? You're new to this church. No one knows who you are. But at that point, God's voice was so much louder to me. And he was telling me that no, people were going to come and God was going to use us. And we were going to be able to get that life that he wanted us to have. God used 2020 to grow our whole family. We grew so much closer to each other and we grew so much closer to God. We made wonderful friendships through the people who joined our life group and came to our house church. We were being so blessed by God and God kept continuing to tell me more. As we transitioned back to in-person church, I kept feeling like Pastor Blake's sermons were all directed right at me. And then the word more showed up at church. <laughs> we continued our life group and we started to serve on the guest services team. Eventually I started to lead the guest services team. I was doing things that I never thought that this shy, timid girl could be able to do. I was no longer filled with that social anxiety and I was capable of doing whatever God wanted me to do. I recognized that I was doing those things because I was letting God work through me. And he was the strength that I needed to be able to fulfill his purpose for me. I adopted 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given me a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. I got to a place where I realized 
that God could use my story and he wants to work through me and through the experiences that I've had. Pastor Rick Warren says that God never wastes a hurt. I learned at Christ Walk that God wants me to use not only my time and my talents and my treasure for him, but he also wants me to use my testimony. As I look back on my life now, I can see where God has woven through the entire story. I see the times where he stepped in and he protected me. He was always there and he will always be my strength and my comfort and give me the courage that I need to do what he wants me to do. I want other people to be able to get this joy and the fulfillment that I have from Jesus. I want to help people. I want to help people through their struggles and show them that God's grace is never ending and that you can't ever fall too far. About two months ago, I heard God telling me that there was something more that he wanted me to do. He had lined up everything for me to be in the right place at the right time where I am right now in my life. I can look back and I can see how he worked in every single detail. I went to Pastor Blake with an idea that I would like to start a Celebrate Recovery Group at our church. And he gave me his full support. When I left that meeting, I have never felt so much peace in knowing that I'm doing what God wants me to do. I know I don't have the strength to do this on my own, but I do know that God can work through me and give me the strength and the courage that I need to go wherever he leads me. My name is Dawn and I am living for something more. My name is Chris Moore and I'm the worship and creative director here at Christ Walk Church. Growing up, all I remember is being in church. My dad received a call into ministry in 1988, but he was part-time. So he left a career at the pipeline to pursue full-time ministry in 1994. We moved around a lot, um, and a lot of the churches that dad pastored, um, there was always nice people and, uh, you know, a lady that could really rock the hymns, you know. As I got into high school, attending church and, um, Having Christian friends were really important to me, uh, and I know that thrilled my parents. It really helped that my high school drumline, uh, a lot of those people went to a lot of the local churches. So I started finding myself uh, involved in a lot of other churches' youth programs so that I could hang out with my friends. But that's when I later realized that I wasn't invested in the church or going to church. I was really invested in the people, and that's when I started to drift. As I started to drift, I started to hang around different people, and it was people that my parents did not always approve of. My mom would always tell me when I left the house, remember who you are and whose you are. And all I could think was, yeah, I get it. My last name's Moore, don't embarrass us. It wasn't until later in life that I realized what she meant. So now that you know a little bit about me and my upbringing, my story starts my senior year of high school it was 2005, uh, I had just turned 18 at the beginning of the year, and I distanced myself from God. For the next six years, I was heavily involved in the music scene of all the local bars in the area. Uh, I wanted to do everything that I could to be a famous drummer. Being a part of that scene uh, really opened me up to a lot of things that I shouldn't have been doing. I started drinking a lot, uh, I started using drugs, and I understand now that part of that was just feeling the emptiness I felt from being separated from God, but also self-diagnosing my own depression, as well as helping treat a knee injury that I had. I was dead inside. I needed God to save me from my self-destructive tendencies. But anytime I felt the draw of God, I would push myself further and into darker places than I was before. In these dark places, multiple times a day is when I would start having these suicidal thoughts. I felt worthless, unwanted, unredeemable. This just led to heavier drug and alcohol consumption. It was all just to numb the pain and fill a void. On an Easter Sunday, I was invited to play drums at a local church. Later that day, I was asked if I would like to play drums at a church camp, which I immediately accepted. 
even though I had distanced myself from God, I wanted to play drums. And that was anything that I could do to play drums, I was going to make that happen. After playing a few weeks at this camp, the last week on a Thursday night, they had an altar call. And there were several hundred kids there. And a small percentage of them came down to give their hearts to the Lord. And all I could think was, why are there so few people willing to give their hearts to the Lord? And I know, it's really kind of a, a log in my own eye kind of situation. But then the pastor offered everyone to make a recommitment to Christ. And that was when the altar was flooded with all the several hundred students. All of these middle school and high school kids grasped what I couldn't. They were redeemable and they were worthy uh, and they were wanted and that they had drifted from God, but they knew that they could come back. And I was so moved that during the middle of a song, I just set my sticks down and got up and went to the altar. The pastor that was uh, praying over a lot of the, the kids looked at me just shocked. And I said, I feel like God's calling me into ministry. And he said, let me ask you this, is your heart right? And I said, absolutely not. And he said, you get on your knees, you get your heart right, and you accept this call into ministry. And so I did. On July 21st, 2011, I was able to look back on all the times that I had close calls. There were times that um, I realized that I shouldn't be alive. Um, but I know it was because God had his hand on me for a higher purpose. And so when I made this recommitment to Christ, I immediately called my parents and told them that the prodigal son had returned. But returning home was a trial in itself. I felt alive for the first time, but I was still trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. I was trying to make things fit of my old life into my new life, and it didn't work. So it was time to clean house. I pulled a spiritual Marie Kondo, and if it didn't fit into what I believed God's plan was for me, then I threw it away. I immediately quit playing in the bar scene. I ended up quitting my career and taking another job that felt like I wasn't being beat down so much. I ended the relationship that I was in, and I ended up moving out of the place where I was living so that I could move in with other believers. I just wanted to do anything and everything that I could to grow closer to God. And as I gave more of myself to God and to the church, I noticed a change in myself. I was more patient, I was less angry, I was more forgiving, and I was more positive. I remember seeing someone about a year after this change that I had made, and they made a comment, oh, I'm glad that it wasn't just a phase. And I was like, of course not. Like, this isn't something you can just phase in and out of. But when you fully submit to what God has planned for you, it's amazing the things that felt heavy weigh nothing now. The things you worried about are replaced with peace. The things you've prayed for are answered. It's funny how God worked throughout my journey because I was never able to maintain a healthy relationship. But the day I made a recommitment to God, if you recall, July 21st, 2011, the funny part is I met the woman I would marry on July 22nd, 2011. I knew that this was the person that God wanted me to marry. And almost three years later, we did. And seven years after that, we had our sweet baby boy, Grant. Looking back, I can see all the times that God has blessed us uh, throughout our marriage and throughout our lives. It's not always a cloud by day or a fire by night or manna from heaven, but what it does look like is someone asking you to step up and you say yes. What it looks like is a pastor asking you to lead a congregation when you have no experience and you say yes. What it looks like is God telling you to move and you relocate your family only to realize this isn't what you thought it was going to be. It's in those moments when you're wandering through the wilderness that God breaks you so that he can rebuild you and make you better. When we found out we were expecting, we decided that we should move closer to Ashley's family. And it was God just putting everything together that 
I found myself at Christ Walk Church. But since being at this church, I'm really starting to see a glimpse of what God's been planning this whole time, and He's not even done. All my life, I never knew for sure what God had in store for me. But when God said serve, when God said go, when God said grow, when He said stretch, when, when He said to live, all I knew was to say yes. My name is Chris Moore. I know who I am, whose I am, and I am living for something more. Good morning, Christ Walk Church. I'm Pastor Tina, and I'm the Family Ministries Pastor here at Christ Walk Church. Today, I just wanted to share some of my story about how I found God again. So as a child, I was raised in a very Christian home, a Pentecostal home at that. It was multi-generational, um, Holy Spirit filled, and that was just the family I was raised in. Um, as a teenager though, I started drifting somewhat and I had such a low self-esteem that I started looking for love in all the wrong places. When I turned 19 years old, I had my first child out of wedlock and I was living at home with my parents. Around 21 years old, they relocated to Georgia and I found myself basically with nowhere to go. Shortly after I became pregnant with my second child and I ended up homeless and hopeless and the relationship that I was in was a horrible one. So because I became homeless, my daughter and I, and I was also pregnant, had to live in a homeless shelter. After we stayed there, we went on to another one in Clearwater, Florida. And it was in that place where God started to get a hold of me. I was homeless for about two years before this really defining moment at one of the shelters that I stayed in. There was a gentleman that was staying there with his family. And one night I was walking down the sidewalk to my car in the parking lot and he was coming up the sidewalk and he had a Bible in his hand. And he stopped me on the sidewalk and started telling me about God and talking to me. And I told him, you know, I've been raised, I was raised in church. And he said, well, you need to go back to God. And that really got me thinking because God had already been pulling on the strings of my heart. My plan obviously wasn't working and I was just down and out. So I did what I knew to do and that was to go and look for a church. I ended up finding a really awesome church in my hometown of Largo, Florida. And it was there that my life would never be the same. I remember walking into the back of the sanctuary and it was the first time I really remember God speaking to me. And he just said, welcome home. It was welcome home, Tina. Welcome home back to the body of Christ, back where you belong. God started doing some amazing things in my life and I surrendered everything. I recall one service where I was sitting there and we had a pastor in town that was visiting at a revival service and he called me out and he said, you know, God brought me over to you because you're hurting and you're in a lot of pain and that I really was. And he said, what you're going through right now, you're better than that. And you need to realize that God is all you need and then he'll give you the desires of your heart. And that really hit me. Tina, your plan's not working and you, only need God. So I surrendered my life. I started serving in any volunteer capacity that I could at the church and just gave my life fully to God. I was enrolled in some college courses and I decided to drop them because I just felt like God was doing something different in my life. God did a lot of amazing things in my life during those years at the church that I had found God again in, including bringing me an awesome husband. And he became an instant father in such an awesome, story of the redemption that God had done in my life. He also had that powerful story and we kind of came together through that redeeming power and that in itself was powerful. And I, maybe I get to tell you that story in more detail one day, but God really started showing me that life was supposed to go on the incline through him, that he had a purpose for me. He had a plan for my life. Previously, I didn't know God had a plan for me or a purpose for my life. And I found that out in my twenties. And I realized that God was calling me into ministry. Now, had you told me a few years before that, that that's where I was supposed to go, I would have said, you're crazy. Do you not see my life? It's a wreck. But God, just like we see the parable of the Good Shepherd in Matthew and in Luke, where the Good Shepherd leaves his flock of 99 and goes after the one, that's what God did in my life. And I got saved through the power of the Holy Spirit and came to know Jesus. And he left his flock and he sought me and sought me and sought me. I was that one who had gotten away and God's reckless love came after me and he truly found me. You know, through a series of events, my husband and I were volunteering um, 
hardcore. Like we were all in doing whatever needed to be done. And then God told me it was time to go to the next level. And I wasn't sure exactly what that was going to be like. Well, lo and behold, God calls me home to my home church that I grew up in, that my grandparents were a part of, my mom was raised in, my parents met there. God called me back home to that place to start in ministry on a staff. And I became the children's pastor there. And I was there for three and a half years. God did some amazing things through that season of my life. And I can tell you that if I had not surrendered my life to Jesus, where I would be right now could be you know, anyone's guess. When I was really down and out, I had some really bad relationships and God really cleansed me of all of that. And I had some hurt that I had to get over. And when those few years before that I had really surrendered, God had to purge me of sin. He had to purge me of bad relationships. And to say I didn't go through brokenness and heartache even after surrendering my life would not be honest. But I knew that whatever God had for me was going to be better than what I had for myself. And I can tell you that now, God has led us here to Christ Walk Church. And there's so many stories within my story that I really don't have time to share with you today. But I can tell you that if you ever feel like you are not perfect, you are not qualified, that God can't use you, I am living proof that God not only wants to use you, He has a plan for you that He had before you were even born. He knitted you together in your mother's womb for a plan and a purpose on this earth. And I would just encourage you to go after that and seek God. I just want to share this one encounter that I had um, with the Lord. I was really down and out and I had just started going back to church. and I knew that God was with me and that he was powerful, but I was working in a restaurant serving and my, myself and my kids had just come out of homelessness and we were able to live in a duplex apartment. And I was a single mom and I'm living on a server's pay. So I was working at Bubba Gump Shrimp Company on Madeira Beach, Florida. And that Saturday night was really late whenever we left that restaurant. And I just found myself in this severely low place in my life. And I remember driving like it was yesterday. The picture is still in my head. I was driving down Gulf Boulevard and I looked up through my windshield just like this. And I was crying my eyes out. And I said, God, I don't see you. I don't even know where you are but please don't let go of me. And I just cried out with tears streaming down my face that night. God, please don't let go of me. You know, after I had cried out to God that Saturday night, I went to church the next morning. And that morning, the pastor got up on stage and he said, I have a word for somebody here. He said, God is not gonna let go of you. And he hears your cries. In that moment, I knew that God had not let go of me. And it is now because of him my life is on the incline, not the decline. And I live a life of victory instead of one of defeat and hopelessness. And if I can encourage you with anything today, I would say God has a plan for you. There is always hope. And if there's more of God to get, go get him, seek him, ask him what it is that he wants for you. And out of obedience to him and his voice, God will bring you into some awesome things, not just hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, but an abundant life. So today, I just wanna leave you with this. I am walking in victory because of who Jesus is, and you can too. My name is Tina, and I am living for something more. Wow, what an incredible time it has been in the Lord today. I hope that you, are challenged and encouraged by those stories in the same way that I am. I wanna thank uh, Chris and Pastor Tina and Dawn and Sarah so much for being so open and being so vulnerable and talking with us about the things that God has done and is continuing to do in their lives. And, and I know that when we share our story, it often is an inspiration to other people. And so we don't want to leave it here with just these four stories that you've heard today. We want to know your story. And you can take part in this by simply visiting our website, thechristwalk.com forward slash story. And there is all of the instructions that you'll need to share your story with us. We want to hear from you. 
what is God doing in your life? What are the, what are the areas where he's challenging and stretching and, and moving you forward in your walk with him? We can't wait to hear all of the stories of life change and everything that God is doing in and through our church. So I want to invite you once again, visit thechristwalk.com forward slash story. Take just a few minutes and share your story with us. We would love to know how God is moving in your life. Now, if we could, let's all stand together and prepare our hearts to seal what, it, what God has done here in this place today, uh, to seal it in our hearts as the band leads us together in worship.